here at London Bridge Station. I'm heading just across the road to London's renowned speciality food market, Borough Market. I'll show you the sourdough later. I've got a large white sourdough. Got all the cheeses from Neil's Yard Dairy. Okay, welcome to the Roberts London Ancestral Home, which fortunately is a Victorian townhouse, just a 20 minute train ride from London Bridge, home of Borough Market. And welcome to the first, the inaugural, Roberts London cheese and wine tasting event. A wine tasting and cheese tasting journey of discovery, I think we called it. Got some wine from Beadles of Borough. Wine merchants and wine bar, let's crack this open first things. First, this is basically gonna be a Borough Market haul video. Got wine from Beadles, bread from Bread Ahead, cheese and butter from Neil's Yard, Neil's Yard Dairy, and some ham, some Iberico ham from Brindisa, some Spanish ham. Now, I think we'll do this properly. As it's the uh, first wine tasting, let's decant it. Well, we decant it and then we'll put it back in the bottle. That's the plan. Sometimes I'm holding this down, sometimes this goes horribly wrong. I don't normally talk about money in these videos, in any of the videos. I used to, but it triggers people. It makes a lot of people very angry. Caps lock on when they start typing. Whenever you mention the cost of things, especially food and drink here in London, I think most people on the spectrum of normal will understand that and accept that the cost of living here in London is different to other parts of the country, other parts of the world. And the increase in rent and rates and the cost of staff, we as consumers here in London have to, that, that cost is passed on and we have to pay it. I don't know why people up north are moaning, they haven't got to pay it, we have. I used to spend three months of the year traveling UK and the world. I know, I know things are cheaper elsewhere, but people want to come to London. It, it's, uh, yeah. And things here are at a premium to other parts of the, other, as I said, other parts of the country. But not only are things at a premium here in London, things we've bought today, I guess, are at a premium wherever you buy them. Right, it's normally uh, it's a little bit of a mess. <laughs> right, the wine is called Meteor. The label is entirely in French. I noticed earlier, so I've got to translate my phone. You might hear some uh, construction work going on next door. I would wait for them to finish, but I've been waiting 10 years. 
Basically, whenever someone moves in next door, they start construction. They try and convert a Victorian building into a modern building, fail, and someone else moves in and starts throwing it all over again. That's pretty good. What I got from that is it's called Meteor because a meteor smashed into France. And this grows in the crater. I think that's the gist of that. Pretty good. When I went into Vidal's, I just uh, said I wanted a wine. Strong wine, red wine, to go with cheese for around 20 pounds. She immediately <laughs> suggested a bottle for 28. Good job. It was a good hire. We uh, we eventually agreed on the one for 22. Okay, let's try the bread from Bread Ahead. I forgot what I was saying before. It was about money. Probably best we skip that. Okay, sourdough from Bread Ahead. Right, what I would say about the money side of things, going back to the money side of things, I forget where I was. I think this was £4.50 for a loaf of sourdough bread, and yeah, again, I know you can buy one for less. My mother keeps telling me you can buy a loaf of sourdough in Lidl, I think it is, for considerably less than you can. The baker's down the road, where I sometimes go. The baker's a few doors along, and we're 20 minutes out of London Bridge. They're £4.50, and they're smaller than this. Um, so, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, so yeah, you can buy, you can buy supermarket bread for less. The ham, I think this ham, this ham is 260 pounds per kilo. It's 96 grams there. 24 pounds 96 P. Is that gonna taste 10 times better than a three pound pack from Sainsbury's? No. I'm hoping it's gonna taste better, but it's not gonna taste 10 times better. The cheese, however, that pack of cheese was 34 quid. Will that taste better than Supermarket? Again, yeah, you can buy cheese for less, you can buy Dairy Lee and fake Philadelphia and Audi for considerably less per kilo than I pay for that. But, um, look, I'm aware eating this, buying this, being able to buy this stuff and eat this stuff is a privilege. If you don't have the resources to do it, I guess that's my point. If you don't have the resources to do it, bread's just a delivery vehicle for the rest, especially the butter. Is that worth, it's only, I suppose it's double, maybe four top, four X supermarket. I think you can suffer that. Is that ham ten to, worth 10 times the price of supermarket, can, the supermarket's version? No. Cheese, I think if you're gonna blow, if you've got limited resources and you're gonna blow your money on anything, the cheese tastes, I mean, we haven't tasted it, but I know the artisan cheese tastes so much, the, the flavour profile is so much better than cheap 
cheese. If you do have the resources to buy stuff, like my mother, you should probably consider the quality of your food rather than price. Cheap, I mean, especially the way commodities are priced right now, cheap is not always better. There are, uh, there's always been substitutes in food. I mean, we call sausages bangers still today because uh, whenever World War II, they were putting too much water, substituting natural meat for water, and they would explode in the pan. Nothing's new, but I think we've become more ingenious with the substitutes. Right, let's try the butter. This is Abbey Farm whey butter. Made from pure fresh whey cream with salt added. It's quite sweaty. Let's test drive the bread ahead sourdough with the Abbey Farm whey butter. That's good. The bread's stuck. Could do with toast in the bread, still quite fresh and quite chewy. The butter, I think with this whey butter, it tastes like butter. It's not too salty actually. I like the Brittany kind of, the, the French style, really salty butter. But I could always sprinkle some sea salt on there. But it's more like with this whey butter, it's more the texture, the creaminess, the richness, than the flavour. That's great. Right, let's try the cheese. What? The cheese I'm most interested to try was. What I asked the girl for was, um, when she asked what I wanted, was her advice. I asked her advice, so one hard, one soft, and a blue cheese, and ideally one of them to be a goat's milk cheese. Um, and for the hard one, there was a few suggestions, but she suggested this, which is real red Leicester. And as I said to her, I'd like to try that because the only red Leicester I've ever tried is the bright orange stuff from the supermarket. She looked very impressed. <laughs> so yeah, this is real red Leicester from Leicestershire. Check that out. I did write down what it was. I made a note. It was Spark and Ho Red Leicester from Upton in Leicestershire, from raw cow's milk. Let's try this. I didn't try any of these in the shop, so they're all gonna be a surprise. Trying to describe it. With these, like, you can taste the grass. Which sounds weird, but um, yeah, grassy, earthy, nutty. 
I stand by what I said earlier. You're up. If you're gonna blow some dough, I think the best thing to do it on is cheese. But I haven't tried the ham yet. Astronomical. Also, although that's a 35, 34 pounds bag of cheese, I could easily have got a, th a third as much and spent a tenner on a really, on a, on a selection of cheeses which would be enough after dinner for two. I'm greedy. Right. I'll leave the blue one till last. This one here, again, slightly sweaty. This was the soft cheese. This isn't the goat's one, this was the cow's milk one again. I thought when I, I thought she would, um, I presumed the, uh, the softer one would be the goat's one, but it's not out there. This one, I think, was Little Roll Right, which is cow's milk from Oxfordshire. So it was slightly smoky. I'm gonna do this. Dig it. Is that a nasty fan round? <laughs> okay, don't try this at home, kids. That. I'm not sure that's held together. Why? It might be leather. <laughs> hey, what's that? Looks and feels like leather. Might be old cardboard. Aged cardboard. That's a lot less intense than the real red Leicester. Yeah, really soft, really creamy. Delicious. Like a, I guess, a smoky, Brie or camembert. Right, even creamier. Kind of has the texture of like um, a dessert or like a, a creme brulee or a quiche. Right. Now, for the blue cheese. Look at that. Oh, that's gonna stink out of the fridge, huh? Right, this one was, is Harborn Blue, made in Devon by Ben Harris. This is the one that's pasteurized goat milk, I believe. Again, completely unique compared to the others. A lot milder than um, I was expecting. Yeah, 
works well. Mate. Blue, blue goat's cheese. What can I say? That is phenomenal. A lot milder than say Stilton or Rockford. And I think I prefer it to those as well. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Right, let's try the ham. I saved the best till last. No, I saved the most expensive <laughs> till last. Whether that makes it the best or not, I don't know. Okay, this is Wendisa CNG Berico, 100% Berico hand. Hand carved. Watch them hand carving in the shop, the store. Like I was saying earlier, yeah, you can buy less expensive ham. I think wherever you buy genuine Berico ham, it's going to cost more than other types of ham. Um, I think wherever I know, wherever I know, this kind of ham is going to uh, be a premium. Yeah, maybe that is ten times better than supermarket stuff. That's good. Again, in my mind, I'm trying to put it in the context of the kind of everyday cheese or meat or butter or bread that you would buy from a supermarket. And it's it's a complete, it, it, it's a similar thing, but it's very different. That's phenomenal. The, Text, the contrast and textures of the fat and the meat is significant. Very subtle taste. Powerful at the same time. Right, I'd recommend all of it. <laughs> I think what I said earlier was, I kind of stand by what I said earlier. If you really want, if, you, if you've got the resources, try it all. If you don't, and you want the best, biggest bang for your buck, I think the cheese is, the artisan cheese is significantly different from mass produced supermarket cheeses. It's got more of a wow factor than the ham. The ham's phenomenal. It does taste completely different to the less expensive, to less expensive less expensively produced hams. But out of all three, the cheese wins. For me. Right, I think for the first Roberts London, Wyman cheese, 
journey of discovery and rant. This has gone on long enough. I need to tuck into this. And I need to stop talking and start eating. So um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, whatever this was, is or becomes. Might be a standalone video. I might get tagged on to the end of the barrel one. Maybe we'll do some more. Right. I'll tuck into a lot more of this. And I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.